Aren't butterflies pretty? Who doesn't love these beautiful creations? Kids love them, flowers love them, even cats love them. Most importantly, if you work in healthcare, you know that patients love them too. In this video, we're going to discuss how to draw blood using a butterfly or winged blood collection set. Now, before I show you how to use a butterfly device to draw blood, let's look at its features and when they should be used. Butterflies have a needle, two wings, hence their name, a long tubing, and another needle at the other end for attaching a tube holder adapter and filling blood collection tubes. Some styles have a lure instead of a needle for attaching to a syringe if the situation requires it. Some come with both, so you can attach whatever you'd like. The beauty of a butterfly set is that it allows for a lower angle of insertion. It's lightweight and easily maneuverable, which gives you greater control. So why don't we use them on every patient? Well, that's the subject of another video, this one right here, because there's lots of reasons. If you want to view that one after this one, I've added a link in the description below this player window. These devices are ideal for small or fragile veins where needle placement and control are critical to the success of the puncture, geriatrics, pediatrics, oncology patients, and so on. They're also great for blood cultures when other laboratory tests are also ordered. But before I show you how to draw blood with one of these, don't forget to click on the subscribe button in the lower right corner of the screen. And then click on the notification bell once you're taken to our channel's homepage so that you're notified every time I post something new. Okay, let's get to it. I'm assuming that you've properly identified your patient, conducted a thorough survey of available veins, and determined a butterfly set is required. Now you see that vein right there? A vein that size does not need a butterfly set. But I'm doing a demonstration here, so I'm making it easy on myself by choosing a nice, easy, close to the surface vein. Next, you're going to cleanse the site and allow it to air dry. While it's doing that, you're assembling the device by attaching either a tube holder or a syringe to the back end, depending on what you've determined to be most successful. You'll probably use a tube holder most of the time, unless you think the vein is too fragile to sustain all of that vacuum without collapsing, in which case you'll use a syringe. Then you'll reapply the tourniquet, anchor the vein, warn the patient, you're gonna feel a little poke here, and insert the needle. Now, if a coag tube is your first or only tube, you have to draw off a little bit of blood into a discard tube before you fill the coag tube. That's because this tubing contains enough air to underfill the first tube by about 10% or more. And that's enough to cause APTT results to be wildly inaccurate and physicians to adjust the patient's anticoagulant dosage in ways that can be life-threatening. But if you prime the tubing first by applying a discard tube, all the air in the tubing goes into a tube you'll be throwing away, not one you'll be testing. The discard tube can be a plain non-additive tube or another coag tube, but just don't use a clot activator tube. It has to be either another coag tube or a tube with nothing in it. Now, just like any other tube holder draw, you'll fill the tubes in the proper order of draw. We have a video on that in our technique playlist. Invert each tube once or twice before going on to the next tube. We'll complete the mixing later. Okay, this is important. The standards require you to keep the butterfly set secured by either holding it in place throughout the procedure or taping it down. You can't let go and expect for it to stay in place, so I'm going to hold it in place rather than tape it. Once you have a blood flow, you can release the tourniquet as long as you have a good vein, but if it's a tricky or fragile vein and you think the flow will stop, you should probably keep it in place. If you're drawing blood cultures, apply the tube holder to the aerobic vial first, followed by the anaerobic vial if included in the set. And that's because you want the air in the tubing to go into the bottle where the organisms require air, the aerobic bottle. But some organisms only grow when there's no oxygen present. Anaerobic means without air. If you fill the anaerobic bottle first, the air in the tubing destroys the anaerobic environment necessary for anaerobes to grow, and you get a false negative result. That's devastating to the patient because people don't live long with anaerobic bloodstream infections that go undetected. After the blood's been obtained, release the tourniquet if it's not already been released, and place a clean gauze pad over the insertion site. 
Remove the needle and apply pressure, immediately activating the needle safety feature according to manufacturer's instructions. Discard the needle into an appropriate sharps container. If you used a syringe, pull back gently on the plunger until you get what you need. Release the tourniquet, remove the needle, apply pressure and activate the safety feature. Remove the butterfly set from the syringe and attach a safety transfer device. Discard the set according to OSHA guidelines and your facility's policy. Then fill the tubes according to the correct order of draw. After all tubes are filled, complete the mixing by inverting each tube slowly and deliberately at least five times. No more than five times for the coag tube. Now, here's why a lot of people like to use winged blood collection sets and probably why they're used even when the vein doesn't require it. Let's go back to our syringe draws. You see this flash of blood right here? That indicates that you're in the vein. A lot of people like that. In fact, they rely on that flash to know whether they should continue or try to relocate the needle. But don't be fooled. You cannot rely on a flash to determine whether you're in the vein or not. A flash of blood in the butterfly can always be relied upon as evidence of proper needle placement, but no flashback can happen for any number of reasons, even when the needle is in the vein. Low blood pressure, a tourniquet that isn't tight enough, and much more. So just because you don't see a flash, don't assume you're not in the vein. You might just be. Apply the first tube to be sure, or pull back on the syringe, before you relocate the needle. A flash of blood might be a good indicator that you're in the vein, but the absence of a flash is not an indicator that you're not in the vein. Butterfly sets have different ways to conceal the contaminated sharp. The latest technology is a push button activation where you simply push a button before removing the needle from the patient's arm and the sharp retracts, rendering it harmless. Other devices activate by having the operator pull the contaminated sharp into the spine of the butterfly. Still others have a hinged shield that the user moves into place to cover the needle before disposal. So here's a question for you. Are you more or less likely to be accidentally stuck with a contaminated butterfly needle than any other device? The answer, you're up to five times more likely. That's according to statistics from EpiNet, the infection surveillance project at the University of Virginia. Butterfly devices are not inherently unsafe. It's just that people don't use them safely or activate their safety features correctly. That's my guess. It's always coming down to behavior, doesn't it? If you want more help reducing accidental needle sticks, consider our full length video titled, How Vulnerable Are You to an Accidental Needle Stick? It lists over a dozen behaviors you could be guilty of that makes it more likely to be stuck with a contaminated needle. Using butterfly devices when they're not necessary is just one of them. That's how you draw blood with a butterfly set. Remember, butterflies are not intended to be used on everyone, just those with fragile or delicate veins. If your patient insists on a butterfly when their veins don't really need one, watch my video on what to say when your patient requests a butterfly when drawing blood. That's today's tip from your personal phlebotomy guru. I'm Dennis Ernst, and remember, keep sticking to the standards.